The second thing I'd like to talk to you about uh, under waves is uh, just general properties of waves. I think the most important equation, for example, is this one right here, V equals F lambda. It's in your uh, data booklet, so it's extremely important. Uh, some people call this the wave equation. Um, so this one right here, V, is the speed of the wave, which is in meters per second. We have um, F, which is the frequency, and that has units of hertz, or you could say it's seconds to the negative one. That's the same thing. Okay, basically, how many times per second does something happen? Uh, if you think about frequency, one uh, common use of that is in a computer. If you think about how fast your computer is, you know, it might be uh, three gigahertz. So that tells you it's three billion uh, operations per second it does. That's what three gigahertz would be. So um, we also have lambda, which is this little Greek symbol right here. Uh, and that is actually the wavelength. And that's measured in meters. So this basically tells you how to get, if you get um, frequency, then you can convert that to wavelength if you know the speed. This works for water waves, this works for light waves, this works for any kind of wave. Uh, that reminds me of a really lame joke, maybe you'll like it, um, it's really short. It's, if you saw a light wave, would you wave back? Oh, it's actually bad, sorry. But um, here, if we look at this wave equation, this tells us a lot. In fact, if we're looking at light, so if this uh, speed of light in that case then becomes C, at least if we're in a vacuum. So we could make that value, you know, C, which is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And if we do that, then we can see that the frequency tells you the uh, wavelength and vice versa. And in fact, uh, what I like about light is that um, the color tells you the wavelength. In other words, if something looks red, then I know at least that uh, red-ish things, at least to our own eyes, those are around 600-ish uh, nanometers. In other words, 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Whereas blue will be maybe 488 nanometers. I think it's amazing that your eye can actually tell the difference between uh, just a few hundred nanometers will look totally blue versus totally red. And so uh, there's lots of different colors out there and lots of colors that we can't see. Part of the curriculum actually asks you to sort of have an idea about the whole light spectrum. But basically the key thing there is that the color tells you the wavelength. Right? Because color and wavelength are in a sense they're the same thing. Right? So if something has um, a wavelength that's way past red that we can't see, that's what we call that infrared. And if something is way bluer than blue, in other words a smaller wavelength than what we can see, well if it's bluer than blue we call that ultraviolet. And of course, we have all the different things way at the extremes. We have you know, x-rays, we have microwaves, we have radio waves. All those things are just a different color of light. They're colors of light we can't actually see. And right? I mean, we can only see you know, between about 400-ish and 600-ish nanometers. Well, 700. It all depends. But uh, if we look at this end, that's the first wave equation. Now, we can actually have some properties of any wave so if we take any old wave and we graph its, uh, let's say, position, so this will be some sort of value here in meters versus a displacement. So here I'm looking like an actual wave, okay, so something that actually goes up and down. I've got two things, right? I can measure its displacement, in other words, its height, but I can also measure the position. So in that sense, if I'm graphing position versus height, and I have any old wave, it can do whatever shape it wants. Let's just say it does something like this, and it can actually go back. I mean, this thing could go forever. If I graph that then, this height right here, so from the middle point to the maximum height, we actually call that the amplitude of that wave. That's the sort of from the middle to the top. Because it goes up above that value, it also goes below by that value. So that's the amplitude. And if we could measure the distance from here to here, right, from one peak to a peak, or it could be from a start point to a start point, in other words, from where it crosses the x-axis, going upwards, you know, and then upwards again. So that distance here is actually the same here. It's also the same as, let's say, from a minimum to a minimum. All this distance right here is actually going to be the same. That's actually what we call the 
uh, in this case, the wavelength. So that's the wavelength measured in meters. By the way, the amplitude is also measured in meters. So if we could measure that distance you know, from this peak to peak, or a trough to a trough, or wherever, that's the wavelength. But with the wave, we can also draw, this is sort of position, uh, we can also draw a wave based on time. So if we put time in seconds, and this time we still uh, graph the displacement, because a wave can actually go, I mean, a wave might actually be traveling. You know, maybe it's like, whoa, and it's moving. And if we know at least uh, something about that wave, let's say it's drawn a similar looking wave like this, then this distance from here to here now, it's no longer the wavelength. See over here, this was a, we were measuring a position difference, you know, from somewhere to somewhere. That was position. If we graphed time, however, then we could say that this right here is some sort of temporal um, measurement. In other words, some measurement of time. And in this case, we would actually call that the period. We often write that with capital T, and that's measured in seconds. So that's actually, whoops, I should have probably written that in uh, green. So we have the period. I probably just made that look a lot uglier now. Basically, we have the period T in seconds. That's going to be this distance on a time graph. So that's the, all the different things that we might want to know about, I think, with these. Uh, one other relation, though, is to see how frequency is related. And frequency is 1 over the period. That's another equation right there. Okay, So f is the frequency in hertz. And you can see the units now, because if you take the period, which is measured in seconds, do 1 over seconds, and clearly the units are 1 over seconds. And that's actually called a hertz. A no, not that it hurts to do it. Uh, we mean H-E-R-T-Z, or Z if you're American. Um, so in this case right here, that's what we need to know about generic things about waves. Now we've actually got two types of waves. We've got transverse waves. And a transverse wave is a wave where the direction of oscillation is perpendicular. And I'm going to use this little symbol. A lot of times in math, we actually use this. This means perpendicular because see, they're 90 degrees. So it's perpendicular to the direction whoops, of travel. So what I mean by that, I'm going to give you an example here. So um, it could be light. So what we mean here is that the direction of the oscillation, because a wave will be something oscillating up and down or back and forth. But the thing is, if it's a transverse wave, it means that the direction that it oscillates is 90 degrees to the direction that it travels. So in this case right here, if it's light and it oscillates back and forth like this, Okay, so if light oscillates back and forth, in this case, if it's light, it'll actually be an electric and magnetic field. Turns out electric field might be this. Magnetic field might actually be back and forth. But the direction of travel will be this. So that could be light. See, light travels this way, and yet the oscillation is up and down. Another example could be uh, a water wave. Same thing. So if you imagine a wave of water, coming by, you can imagine yourself sitting in the water, and then what happens is as a big wave comes up, the wave goes, you know, up, whoa, and you're, you know, then you go down as the wave travels. What happened then is the oscillation went up and down, and yet the wave traveled 90 degrees to it, or perpendicular to it. Now we have another type of wave, which is longitudinal. And that is when the direction of travel is parallel. Whoops, uh, sorry, direction of oscillation. That's what I meant to say. Direction of oscillation is, and we use this symbol here for parallel to direction of travel. So in this case, I could be talking about, for example, sound. So sound waves are actually like this. If I've got little molecules of air, and I've got other molecules here, I'm actually going to oscillate them back and forth 
and yet the way that it travels it also travels that way. So in that sense, like this right here, so that's an example of a trans, uh, sorry, longitudinal wave. So sound, for example, which is what I'm doing right now as I speak, I'm actually um, com creating these areas where there's compression of molecules and also areas where there's not so much. So that's actually called a rarefaction. So I've got places where the, you know, there's more molecules together and then there's less molecules. What's happening is as I'm speaking, I'm actually causing them to vibrate back and forth and that travels in that same direction or at least parallel. So that's the difference between longitudinal and transverse. So by looking at uh, different properties of waves, we can understand and uh, solve all sorts of types of questions. Just remember though that there is a difference between transverse and longitudinal. Those are very common exam questions. As well as asking you to draw or graph or they give you a graph and ask you to know things about either the frequency or period or wavelength or amplitude. And the, I think the key equation here is this V equals F lambda. That's a way to convert from frequency to uh, wavelength or find the speed. Right? And basically you're normally given two of these variables and you have to find the third. So I think those are the key sort of basic definitions and basic properties of waves.